Well, I don't know what I did to my camera for starters, but anyway. Uh, the little story to tell. Uh, yesterday I had to go look for something. And, uh, well, when I was back in the back of this piece of property looking, I noticed uh, some silvery object in the distance. I knew it didn't belong there, so I walked over there, and, uh, well, it was a tent. Or what was left of one is uh, the one-man tent. Been there, had to have been there a year. Man, it's, it's shredded. There's not much of the tent left. Just enough to catch my eye blowing in the wind, apparently. And, uh, a sleeping mat, one of those little knee pillows for like your garden, and two bags of, uh, kidney beans. You know, some, uh, Mexican brand of, of beans. I've, I've never seen those in the store or whatever. I don't know where they come from. A jerry can that uh, smelled like it had uh, motor oil in it. A little one gallon bucket and remnants of a fire. No backpack, no dead bodies, nothing like that. But uh, this piece of property is about half a mile from the city limits. And uh, it shares a property line with an industrial park. Uh, that tent was maybe 200 yards from. Uh, U.S. Highway. <clears throat> you never would have saw it unless you know you can't you you can't see it from here. You can't see it from the highway. You can't see it from the industrial park. I mean, it was it's a really good spot. But you have to wonder why the guy just left his tent and his sleeping stuff, his food. You know, there's no telling how much stuff he left behind because you know, like I say, the the camp's been abandoned for a year. You know, but in a SHTF scenario, uh, which if you're living like that, I mean, those things can come up pretty quick, you know. Get spotted, trespassing, the sheriff shows up, uh, you know, whatever. You know, you got to get going quick. And this guy had his bases covered. He had, uh, and I'm sure what the oil was, was a way for him to... To, to light his campfire easy. And, uh, you know, of course, the beans, the bucket was, I don't know, they got a lot of uses. Actually, 300 yards had access to uh, city water coming out of a water valve or a faucet right here at the south. Nobody's lived here for seven or eight years. But they had, you know, they kept the utilities and all stuff on. So, what is it that just makes a man just jump up and leave his house? You know, a house that's designed to you put on your back and go. Have a contingency plan, people. Be ready, because, I mean, you don't know. Something could go wrong. Something could go real wrong real fast, and you got to leave your stuff behind. When that guy left what he had on his back or in his pockets, that's what went with, and the rest of it's over there turned into trash. Uh, I'm just going to clean up the side. I'm going to tell the old lady that owns the place, because she uh, a little paranoid. 
you know, there's no telling how that would affect her. Um, no, no sense in it. It's been there and gone. And we've got people come through and put up tents and uh, little abandoned county lots and stuff all over the place all the time. But when they leave, they usually take all their stuff with them. There's one guy, he left, he lived there for over a year. And uh, he left a mess. But his real property went with it. You know, when he left, he took his backpack, his tent, his bicycle. I think that's why only way he got run off was because he, whenever, you know, he'd bring his stuff out, his groceries or whatever, but then when he'd drive back to town, he didn't take them back as trash with him. And I think the county was a little fed up with the garbage, but, uh, you know, you never know when we be ready to, to skit. I mean, that guy, I never read about anything like it in the paper or anything. It's a small town. I mean, so everybody and their dog would have known if somebody like that got arrested. So, yeah, have a backup plan. Or you wind up running from the trouble and leaving all your stuff behind. Anyway, that's about it.